All right, it's day 10, and this is one of two seedlings from the group where I removed all the seed husks before soaking them in hydrogen peroxide for five days. The leaf development is a little strange. They're all curly and wrinkled looking because of that. And this is one of two seedlings from the group where I just put intact, healthy looking seeds in hydrogen peroxide for five days. So I had to bury these deeper than with the other group because uh, you know, roots look all funny. Everything is just kind of deformed. Ironically, these four backups have done better in less time. The two on the left are experiencing textbook development. The two on the right are in big trouble because they have sections of root that are exposed to the dry air. And under the LED lights, these uh, little piles of sphagnum peat moss dry out really fast. Based on all the evidence, I would have to say this is by far the best method for germinating Charente melon. Okay, it's day 13, and let's take a look. So basically there's been a little bit of growth. I think it's imperative for the root systems to establish well first, and for some of these I transplanted and you know pushed the roots well below the soil surface, so to speak, so they can get enough moisture and not dry out after just a few hours under this LED light. Uh, these two backup seedlings are now the primary ones. I arranged everything in a big dome heap so there could be enough soil volume and depth for root development, which I think is a lot more important than shoot system development in the beginning. As I remember in my honeydew series, the cotyledons would get pretty big even in the absence of sunlight. It's day 16. This is my balcony, as many of you are very familiar with. This is the 85 liter bag of compressed sphagnum peat moss. Of course, when you start scooping it out and manipulating it and putting it into a new vessel, it expands. So I actually used up a lot less than the 75 liters that I thought I would. This is uh, another clamp lamp with aluminum foil on top, just in case we get unexpected storms. That almost never happens. I took 10 new seeds from the 2014 batch and push them down, pointy tip down, about 90% of the way in. And I think that'll be the best method. I poured in four liters of water and hardly any came out of the hole. I drilled at the bottom of this 75 liter rope tub. So the sphagnum peat moss should be really moist. It's very hygroscopic as I learned with my ginger series. And I'm gonna spray some water, distilled water um, on the top every day basically and shine this light for quite a few hours during the day not as long as my indoor lights but you know around nine or ten hours a day although the intensity of this LED light can't even compare to the Sun uh, just the fact that it's shining there for nine or ten hours a day means the cumulative effect is pretty big and somewhat comparable to the Sun if you let it run for even longer so that's my setup and I'm basically gonna just wait and see what happens I think good things will happen as you can see that hill blocks a lot of the winter month sun from getting here after like 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. so this is what it looks like at night and you know that makes a truly huge difference but you know I think just the 9 or 10 hours a day will be enough to get these to germinate and hopefully they'll get tall enough to reach the sun soon